Hi, my name is Søren. Welcome to the fifth video about marine ignition. The subject of matter is the Kokosan ignition. If you have a marine with the Kokosan ignition, you're probably a happy guy, because there are hardly any problems with those. There are a couple of well-known problems though, and I'll address them. And I'll also give you a couple of must-do modifications, so you'll be an even happier modernista. There are numerous reasons why the Kokosan system is better than the old ones. The only downside is the often stated argument that you're battery dependent. Um, with the quality of batteries these days and the availability, you can get a battery almost everywhere. I don't think it's a problem. You have a much more powerful generator with a stronger magnetic field a CDI unit that is more reliable and it's separated from the ignition core so you don't have any heat issues or interference that will ruin your CDI unit. The ignition coils, they are way bigger than the old ones so you have more power to the spark plug. The pickup system, way better. You have a larger circumference so you can adjust the two uh, pickups more precisely. Uh, and also you can adjust them independently, so you can adjust each cylinder, uh, which you can't with the old ones, with, with, uh, where the, it's a fixed uh, system. The problems you may experience with this system, they are all, or rather both, because I think they are only these two, they are both related to the flywheel. The magnets may come loose, uh, they are glued to the drum and heat, vibrations, old age may cause the glue to fail. Uh, one thing is certain though, if you use the wrong kind of pulley with uh, claws, you will uh, most certainly uh, break the magnets off. You will bend the walls and they will come off. So always use the right kind of pulley. Uh, it's the same that goes into the, uh, the old ones. I would suggest you now and then uh, have a look at the magnets. If they start to loosen, you will see a crack in the in the glue. You can with a, a knife very carefully because they are brittle. You can remove the magnets and glue them back on. Um, they are hard to come by, so take really good care of them. If the magnets come loose uh, while riding. Uh, the flywheel is ruined, so take care of it. Another problem that was actually sort of a mystery until some years ago uh, plays out like this. Uh, you come to a standstill and the revs will suddenly go to 2500 revs. You can then put it into gear and sort of choke it with the clutch so you will have a normal uh, idle speed. And it will stay like that, but only until next standstill where you have the same problem again. I've seen many attempts to sort of circumvent the problem, alterations to the airbox, uh, different jettings and so on. But none of these uh, attempts were the answer to where the dog was buried. Not until Hartmut from Germany came up with the right solution to the problem. In the 94th edition of the German Marini magazine La Strega, he published this article where he hit the nail on the head. The system has a very wide advance curve. It goes from 0 degrees to 40 degrees. This is of course the inductive segment. At 4000 revs and beyond, uh, the advance is 40 degrees and here the front part of the segment determines when the CDI unit has to release the spark. At a thousand revs, it's the rear part that determines the, the release and here we have a, an advance of zero degrees. The problem is at 2500 revs the advance is already at 30 degrees. And the advance curve from 1000 revs to 2500 revs is a very steep one, so the engine will have a hard time settling at the right revs or the right advance. 
The practical solution is simply to deprive it of the lower advance. So you will always have a bit of advance even at low revs. You simply cut off 10 millimeters from the segment and remember it has to be the rear part of the segment as I've done with this flywheel. It won't change the upper range of course but you will have a stable idle and the range will be from 12 to 40 degrees. I've done it with both my darts, almost all the Marinisti I know and the bikes that have been through my shop they've all had had this hardwood modification done and all are happy Morinisti. Another modification that will make you a happy Morinista is a simple one. Remove this chunk of steel. It doesn't do any good for your engine, on the contrary. It's most likely there to stabilize the idle and so you can have a very low idle speed, which in any case isn't healthy for the engine. And with the hard mode modification, further stabilizing measures are superfluous. It will make it more difficult for your engine to rev and it puts stress to the engine. If you do, remember to mount it correctly when you turn it in the lathe or on the milling machine. Never chuck it on the bowl. It will break the magnets loose. Always mount it in a correct manner. Apart from the mentioned problems and especially the with the magnets coming loose, you will probably never have problems with the system and you won't need any parts. But in the event, the CDI unit, don't get suckered into buying an overpriced unit simply because it's an original Marini unit. I've seen them very high priced out there. But it's the exact same thing that went into the Suzuki GS500. And you probably know the bike because there's so many out there. And I think in Denmark it was the most sold bike for 10 years in a row. So there are plenty out there and you can get them for a very low price. If you have a magnet coming loose during the ride, you might ruin the, the stator. Um, it can withstand a lot and, and if there's no outside force it will last you a lifetime. But you can get replacement and this one uh, is the same that goes into the Kawasaki GP set 500. Um, so you can get one. And you might then think, well, can I use the flywheel then? Um, actually, the basic flywheel is the same, but the Japanese do things a bit differently. They mount the flywheel this way on the crankshaft, and then the, the stator comes from the outside in. So the taper is turned the other way around. Um, so unless you can find someone that will make you a new inner part, uh, you can't use the flywheel. And besides that, uh, they are as sought after in the Kawasaki community also because they have the same problem with magnets coming loose and probably more because it, it runs a bit hotter in the uh, Kawasaki. So again, take good care of it. Uh, pickups. You can use any kind that will give you somewhat the same signal as the original ones and surely the ones from Kawasaki also. Ignition coils, any old standard thing you'll find out there, uh, as long as it fits where it's supposed to go. And I know it isn't a part uh, of the ignition system per se, uh, but the rectifier. Uh, you can also use uh, standard ones from Japanese bikes and, and surely the one from the Kawasaki. There you have it, a very nice and reliable system. Take really good care of the flywheel and use the right tools. In the unlikely event that you need parts, look for standard parts for the CDI unit, the Suzuki GS500. For the Stator, the Kawasaki GPZ500. Do yourself a favor and get rid of the excessive weight on the flywheel. If not for tuning purposes, then to make the engine uh, live longer. And finally, the hardwood modification. 
have it done or do it yourself it's very easy I think it's essential happy writing and thanks for watching